Good morning, good morning. You guys ready for church? Yes. Uh, it's so cool. You know, we are the church, so wherever we're at, it's church. But we also come to a place that we call church to celebrate Jesus Christ and all that he does. And so that's why we're such a celebratory type of church service because that's what we believe God's called the people to come together to celebrate our new life in Jesus Christ. So, hey, uh, grab a Bible or device and turn to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. And uh, it's, uh, if you've never read Romans, uh, it, it lays out the gospel like nothing else. Um, and it's, sometimes it's complicated, uh, maybe get a little commentary with you, but it's so good. We are in this week two of our spiritual growth campaign uh, called It's Not Personal, which is meaning that we take our personal relationship with Jesus Christ, but we don't keep it personal. That we are like a walking billboard of, of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that is lost, that needs hope, that needs help, and that needs you and needs Jesus very much so. Uh, we are also a church of life groups. And how, hey, did you guys go to your life groups this week? <laughs> Only this side. Wow. What? Well, there's a lot of youth over here. So, yeah, that's still a life group. That's that, 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 going to your youth group. Hey, we're so excited about that. If you have not signed up yet, uh, you can, we have sign-up tables over there. that You can still sign up. It's not too late. Uh, or if you missed your life group this week, it's not too late. Just go, go the, the, this coming week and just enjoy that. It'd be awesome. Well, we started out the service last week by, by a quote from Sir Francis Assisi. Um, and a long time ago, long been dead, uh, but he gave this famous quote. And, and I wanted to kind of springboard on it again today. It says this. It says, Preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. Preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. Well, today, last week, we talked about more that physically we're, we are actions, but today we're going to look a little bit more at the, 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 the use words part. And so today is, is uh, titled, Raising My Voice, and, uh, or Raising Your Voice. And so before we go any further, let's, let's begin this time in prayer. Ah, uh, Lord, you're good, and we know it, and you reveal it all the time, but right now, as we listen to your word, as we read your word, uh, as you are the word, uh, we pray that it would just get down deep into the recesses of our, our minds and our hearts, so open our eyes to what you have to teach us today, and we lift this time up. And may we be different when we leave than the way we came in. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, our, our theme verse, our theme verse throughout this series is John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 14. And this is what we looked at last week. But John uh, 1, 14 says, the word, who's the word? Yeah, okay, so the word is Jesus, and the, uh, if you didn't know that before, you're going to know it after reading this verse. But it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Good word. You know, the word became flesh, and the word dwelt among us. That's Jesus Christ. And, and what's so cool about this is that when I ask Jesus into my life, believe it or not, then, then not only is he dwelling among us uh, at one time, he's still dwelling among us today. Because where does he dwell? Within my heart, right? I'm a, I'm a walking billboard of Jesus Christ. And, and you know, I don't live it perfect. Uh, sometimes I'm ashamed. But on the other hand, what I really want to come across is that where I am, Jesus is. And so we're going to look at three points today. And, and God wants us to bring the gospel wherever we're at. And he wants us to use words. And he wants us to do that. But point number one is this. Is before I should open my mouth, I must also open my heart. Before I open up my mouth and say these words, I, I, I really need to open up my heart. Because words can just be words. You know, I can just preach any old time. But if I don't also share my heart and share the vulnerability of, of, of what Jesus has done in me and, and done that, then, then a lot of my words won't really mean a lot. Let's look at our, our verse, Romans chapter 15. 
Romans 15, and we're going we're to start with verse 5 and, and go to verse 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let, let, let's look at that again, but look at it with this in mind, that we're kind of to have the same attitude that Jesus Christ has towards us, the way we need to have that attitude towards others. Look at it again. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God, the Word, became flesh, and He dwells among us, and, and, he, and he has this attitude towards us, and we're supposed to have that same attitude toward others. But you want to know what that attitude was? That God is a vulnerable God. He's one that opens up his heart towards mankind. And that vulnerability, I mean, think about it. He became a, a babe. You know, we're going to be celebrating Christmas in a couple of months. I can't, can't believe I just said that. But, but uh, we're going to be celebrating Christmas in just, a, right, just, I mean, Boom, it's going to be here. And we celebrate this whole thing about that God became flesh and became a babe. But think about the vulnerability of that. Think about how vulnerable. I mean, he had to be cared for. He had to have a mom and dad, had to have all these different things. But then his vulnerability didn't stop there. He becomes an adult, and he goes amongst the crowds. He starts preaching the word and opening up his heart towards mankind. Here's God being vulnerable because he could be rejected. Even today, he's rejected. That's the beauty and the beast of free will. That God created us to be free will beings, which means we could choose him or not choose him. That's a vulnerable God. He goes, here I am. Here's my love. You know, and people spin at it. And our attitude is supposed to be like that, to be vulnerable and open. Look at uh, another verse, Colossians chapter 1. It's going to be up on the screen here. Verse 26 and 27, he says, The mystery that has, been, that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles, or the non-Jews, the glorious riches of this mystery. What is this mystery? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Here's this mystery of this gospel. He says, for generations it hasn't been, been known. But then Christ Jesus comes in. But here's the real mystery, is that Christ is in you. <laughs> How does that happen? How does this vulnerable God come in here? The huge creator of the universe, and yet he can make himself small enough to be within my life. Christ is in you. So, wherever I am, Jesus is. I am Jesus with skin. In fact, look at that. I am Jesus with skin. And I want you to say that. Everybody say that with me. I am Jesus with... Okay, I didn't say mumble this. I didn't say underneath your breath. I want you to proclaim it and say it and believe it. Ready? I am Jesus with skin. Let's say that again. I am Jesus with skin. I bring the gospel whether I like it or not. I, people are watching whether I like it or not. People are listening to the words whether I want them to or not. Because I am Jesus with skin. Now the question is, you know, how well are you bringing it? Because Jesus is in my heart. And where I go, he goes. See, one of our other themes throughout this is that to love the one in front of you, you know? To love the one in front of you. The person at work, love them. Oh, you might go, well, she is rude. I know. But I'm supposed to love the one in front of me. My spouse. Oh, that's a tough one. My kids. My parents, my schoolmates, yeah, that one kid that since elementary school has just got on my nerves. I'm supposed to love the one in front of me, period. 
That's what we're supposed to do. Hey, speaking of vulnerability, we have a congregant named Lee. And you might have seen uh, on, on Instagram and things a little bit of her testimony. We're going to show it right now. Uh, but I want you to pay attention and see the vulnerability, not just of Lee, but the other people that are in the story. And so enjoy this. My son, Elijah, was diagnosed with brain cancer when he was 11 months old. And we went through seven rounds of chemotherapy. And when I found out that he was terminal, um, the song, It Is Well, came to mind. And I would sing it over and over to Elijah. And we would dance in the hospital room and I knew that he was going to a place that was better. So I fully accepted until he died. And then when he died, the grief hit me like a ton of bricks. And um, I didn't quite know how to process my faith following Elijah's death because even though in Matthew 7 it says to ask, to seek, and to knock. I suppose I got a little bit mixed up because I thought that I was asking and because I was a faithful Christian and it seemed like it was in God's will that he would be healed. I guess I just didn't understand why he wasn't healed. I still don't. But what's different about me now is that I understand that I'm not God. He is. He's God. I have questions. We're gonna have a conversation when I get to heaven and meet him face to face. But that being said, I'm in a place where I can understand that it's not from God that he got cancer in the first place. It's not from God that he wasn't healed. Now, he's healed in heaven, of course. But um, that, that, that wasn't from God. We live in a fallen world. And what's most important is that God has been by my side all along the way. At the time I was attending a church and uh, I reached out to the leadership and let them know that I really needed prayer. And unfortunately I didn't hear back for about six weeks post diagnosis. And that was pretty hurtful. So that was pre coming to ALC. And I knew from attending that church, it wasn't gonna be my forever church. I was always looking for a new church and I happened to run across a flyer for Family Fun Fest two years ago and decided that I would take my children and come to Family Fun Fest. And that's where I met Pastor Kim, who introduced me to Pastor Bruce, who uh, took me all around children's ministry. And I got to see the amazing opportunities and fun things that they had for kids. And I knew that this would be a great place for me um, to shepherd my children because my husband is not a believer. After Elijah died, he decided that he pretty much wanted nothing to do with God. Pastor Bruce then introduced me to Pastor Danny, and he saw me and understood my story in a way that other people don't. He understood the anger that I felt and the disbelief that I was on my knees and thought that God would, of course, answer a prayer to save my son's life and have it in his will. It wasn't, and Pastor Danny met me where I was at and understood. So the very next Sunday, I started attending and I haven't missed a week ever since. So it's, um, it's where we call home and they've been helping me shepherd my children ever since and I don't think that I could do it without ALC. Every Sunday that I showed up, I was meeting new people and I was greeted with hugs. I was greeted with support and discipleship when I needed it. Every Sunday while I was pregnant with my daughter Eliana, I would come forward and I asked Dale and Danny for a prayer. In fact, they knew that I was pregnant before my family knew that I was pregnant. And there was a complication with my pregnancy that could have been detrimental to Eliana's life. And every week I came forward and we faithfully prayed together that uh, in Jesus' name, she would be born without complication. And that's exactly what happened. I decided to bring Eliana to church uh, four days after she was born. And uh, I wanted to, to present her and introduce her to Dale and Danny because they had faithfully prayed for her every week while I was pregnant. And um, I remember just Dale saying, praise the Lord, praise God. Um, here she is and she's healthy. 
and it was so meaningful just to have Dale and Danny who prayed for me while I was pregnant now to be holding my baby girl who was healthy, born complication free, everything was perfect about her and say, here's the miracle that we've prayed for. I can confidently say that I love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul and all my mind and I'm on my knees praising him even in hard times to today. He's by my side through all of it. A couple of things I want to say about that is one, I'm thankful for Lee, um, but I, I so remember, vividly remember that day. Uh, it was our, our family fun fest, and, um, and I met Lee, and somehow she quickly told me in a vulnerable state that she had lost her son. Well, I took her around and we were chatting and, and then I knew exactly what I needed to do and I went over and I found Pastor Danny who him and Sherry lost their son, Lincoln, uh, as an infant. And um, so I knew exactly what Danny was going to do. Danny went and I pointed her out. She was way down this other area and he went down and found her and started talking and then he told his story. And then I remembered he prayed over her, and then they were both weeping, and uh, as they just shared their story. See, being vulnerable is Jesus. Jesus to the people. Whether it's a co-worker or something, a lot of times we can't share words until we've also shared our heart. Because when we share our heart, now people want to listen. Now people want to know what's different about us, what, what's in us. The second thing I want to share is the story about prayer. Uh, you know, when, when Lee became, was pregnant with her daughter and there's these complications, and she had fear and worried about that stuff. And every single Sunday she came up, because we have people that are praying up here, and Dale and Danny Gann, it's a different Danny, Dale and Danny Gann, uh, they go to the first service, and, and so does Lee. And every week she would go up there and have them pray. And Dale and Danny would pray against fear. They would pray that they would not let the enemy have a foothold, that, that pray for her baby daughter and prayed every single time. And just like she said, she had her baby. And four days later, the thing she wanted to do the most was to make sure she could present her daughter to them so they could see. And they were just, ah, oh, you should have seen it. Just all this so exciting. Prayer matters. You know, we actually have a, a prayer ministry every Tuesday night um, at 6.30, right over there in the fireside room. And anybody's invited for two reasons. You can invite to pray. They pray for the country. They pray for uh, this church. They pray for the pastors. They pray for each other. They pray for ministries. Uh, they do all that different stuff. And if you want to get involved and get, I want to be a piece of that, then come on at 6.30 every, every Tuesday. Rain or shine, they're always there. And also... People go there for healing. So all of a sudden you sit down and go, man, I, 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 or I'm dealing with huge anxiety, or I just found out this horrible situation. Then you come on Tuesday and ha be prayed for. Just go, can I have someone pray for me? Or, or up front here. Because prayer matters, you know? And uh, so, so the thing is, is that we need to, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the whole idea of it's not personal means that my personal relationship with God should not stay a personal relation. It needs to go to others. I need to love. I need to fiercely be. I need to reveal my heart. I need to, need to pray and be prayed for. Because we are called to love the one in front of us. Who is that? Who's that one that's in front of you? Does somebody come to your mind? Point number two is this. Is The point number one is that I need to, uh, before I can really say my words, I need to share my heart. But point number two is this, is like, like Jesus, I must move into their world. Just like Jesus, I must move into the other person's world. You know, that doesn't mean you move into their home, you know. It doesn't, doesn't mean you can go, hey, Jesus, came, uh, I'm Jesus with skin, hey, I'm going to come live in your home. No, that, that, that's creepy. Uh, but, it, but it means but to, 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 to be in their world, and, and I'll explain it in a second, but let's look at John 1.14 again. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. You, you, you have this, this, this thing that one of the reasons why we call ourselves Authentic Life Church is because we wanted to be authentic, not just towards each other and not just in our relationship with God, but even an authentic into people in the, the world. We, we need to be authentic. Look at this, uh, uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1. Now this is the Apostle Paul, and he's writing to his protege, Timothy. And, but he's also writing to us. Okay? That'd be like me writing you know, to Danny, or Danny, his protege, you know, Kenan, something like that, or whatever. But check out what he says here. He goes, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. And then Paul adds, of whom I am the worst. I love that. I mean, the saying is that first part. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And then Paul has to add, because he's authentic, and whom I am the worst. Now, I do have a problem with that, because I'm like, Paul, you can't be the worst, because I am. Right? Anybody else ever feel like that? What are you talking about? I'm the worst sinner. But he goes, there, here's a trustworthy saying, that Christ came into the world to save sinners, who, who I am the worst. And then verse 16, but for that, but, look at that, there's a, there's a but God moment right there. But, but, for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, the, to be honor and glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. See, here's the thing. He goes, this is the reason why. You know, here I am. I'm the worst sinner. But God, Jesus, is willing to save anybody, no matter how low you are, no matter what what depths of sewage you've been living in, no matter what you've done, he's making sure that every single person knows that they could be saved because I am the worst of sinners and he saved me. And that's the message. He saved me. And that's the gospel. He saved me and put me on display because wherever I am, Jesus is. He lives and dwells amongst us because he dwells within us. And that's the message. That's the message of the gospel. That can't be kept personal. It just can't be at all. You know, Jesus came into our mess in order to bring his healing message. So when someone looks at you, do they see perfection? No. No. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're not pretentious. Hopefully you're not walking around trying to say you're better than anybody. Because you're not. We're just saved. He came into our mess, and that's the message. He came to save sinners. So, you know, one of the things we have in here is, is this challenge, this 30-day challenge of the, over this course of this time that you love the one in front of you, that, that you find somebody. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's, it's a Maybe it's even your spouse. You just realize you have to reconnect or, or, or whatever, whoever it is. But love the one in front of you. But the other one is to read the Gospel of John. Now, I don't know if you've been doing that, but I, I, I've been doing it all week and reading the Gospel of John. And I've read it before, uh, you know, many times or whatever. But, man, for some reason, it's just, this is me, it's just jumping out at me how beautiful of a writer John is. It's like almost lyrical. Like even like that, right? Flesh, you know, uh, the word became flesh. It's like, it's beautiful. And, you know, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I mean, good, awesome. So I don't know if you're taking up that challenge. It's not too late. Just start reading the gospel of John. It's beautiful. If it takes you a year, then it takes you a year. But uh, if it takes you, you know, a day, go for it. But that's what we're doing, to love the one in front of us. And, and I, I want to I share this with you. I'm going to use examples of my kids. So my, my daughter, Corey, um, right around 12, 13, she started just going from 
happy-go-lucky kid to these anxieties and things that happen in the teenage years and body changing and all this different stuff, trying to figure out who you are and, and, and everything. And, and, but, but, but what was really tough is that we knew she was hurting and she was going through these things, but she kept starting at that same time pulling away from me and my wife. Like, that's not the thing you need to do. Youth, don't pull away from your parents. You know, when you need, when you need help, there are, you know, all kinds of things. But anyways, my daughter started pulling away. And I remember uh, a lot of conflict started happening in the house and, and all kinds of things. And, and uh, I realized, Melissa and I were talking, and I said, you know what? I think I stopped dating my daughter. Um, I, I, need to, I need to jump into her world. She's pulling away from mine. But that doesn't mean you know, I need to be the big boy. And I need to jump into her world. And so I realized one thing we had in common is we both love musicals. And so uh, uh, the movie, Phantom of the Opera, the musical Phantom of the Opera was made a movie. It was okay. But uh, I, I, I said, Corey, let's go see this movie. And I knew she'd say yes. And so we went. And I remember I gently just kind of put my hand on the seat. And she pulled away. And it just, my, my heart sunk. You know, that she, like, she is so tense that even me not even touching her, she pulled away. Afterwards, we went to a restaurant, and then I got the guts to kind of say, Corey, what's, and I didn't even get to finish. And she's like, Dad, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm going crazy. And I go, okay, let me just, let's just love. And so I made, we made a pact that we were going to go see a show, a movie, or a musical at least once a quarter. We are going to dress up and go out to the Buell Theater and do these things, and it was just awesome. And then we decided we're going to go to New York. And so we went to New York. There's a picture. Uh, that's the Buell Theater, and here we are in New York. And now we're not in the musical. That's just a big old poster, and we just stood and got somebody to take our picture. We look like we could be in it, though, don't we? Uh, that's one of my favorite pictures because we were just free. And we started going to New York every two to three years all the way up until she was 30. Just me and her. Well, one time we let Melissa come with us, but, but it's just me and her. And it would be a week of just us connecting and having the most fun and talking about musicals because we could talk about that. And, and, and uh, you might even ask, you say, hey, did you see the Statue of Liberty? Nope, never seen it. <laughs> Go to a museum? Nope. Did you do? Nope. All we did over the course of a five or seven day trip was see a musical every single night or, or in the matinees. And we had a blast reconnecting and, and being like that. I had to jump into her world. Or my son. My son it just likes to play. So his thing is he wants to go to amusement parks. So we would go to amusement parks. And uh, Disney World or Harry Potter, like Universal. And, and I, I even remember uh, uh, when, when five, five years ago, our memory just came up. Bryce just sent me the memory. Five years ago this month, um, we were, God had all planned. He lived in North Carolina and, at that time, and uh, I was going to fly to Orlando, and he was going to fly to Orlando, and we're going to meet, and we got a condo, we had our tickets, and everything like that, and then some stupid hurricane was happening. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but we really do. It was five years ago, this big old hurricane, I don't remember its name, Dorothy, whatever, and this hurricane is coming through, and so they canceled all the flights so we wouldn't be able to go in there. And I kept looking at the trajectory of the hurricane. <clears throat> you know, you can kind of watch that. And I go, by the time we get in there, it's not going to be there. And I came up with an idea. Bryce, I'm going to fly into North Carolina, and we're going to drive through the hurricane and, and get, to, get to there. Dumb. But that's what we did. And we just drove, we drove through this hurricane, and it was nothing. It was like one of our big rainstorms, you know. I mean, it was, it was, you didn't have to pull over. But we got in there, and no one was at the amusement park. And it was not rainy. By the time we got to, you know, we got to our condo, the next day it was all bright and shiny. And there we go. And we had the park to ourselves. I mean, we're sick of Harry Potter because we went through the ride. <laughs> let's do Hogwarts again. Okay, let's do the train. Again. You know, whatever. But, but anyways, but that's his world. And it would be the best times of communication because we could do that. I had fun too, but, but it was his world. Or we're both drummers, so anytime stomp, you know, the, the drum routine thing comes to the Buell, I always get us tickets. And it goes, Bryce, stomp's in town. You ready to go? And he goes, yep. Now he's all board gaming. 
So now what, guess what? I'm now a board gamer, you know, because why? I'm stepping into his world. Uh, so we do that. You know, now, that, you might say, that's pretty easy. That's your kids. No. <laughs> but let's take it to another level. What about the person at work? Maybe she likes crafting. And maybe what you just need to do, hey, I'd like to craft with you. Or maybe you find out somebody at your work is into board games. Then go down to the enchanted grounds and, and grab some board games and, and drink coffee. You know, jump into their world. Maybe your neighbor has a fascination with, with uh, 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 fish tanks. Sit there and talk to them about fish tanks. But, but do it. <laughs> Just kidding. You get the pr- picture. The picture is we need to jump into their world. That's what Jesus did. He was vulnerable. We could have rejected him. In the same way, we need to be vulnerable and jump into people's world. And and the third point is this, is that speak and act in grace and truth. Speak and act in grace and truth. Look again at John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He jumped into our neighborhood. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and and what? Truth. Well, most of us get the grace part, you know. Uh, we don't always understand how God can forgive us, but grace is forgiving. I, I need to show grace towards that person at my work. I need to show grace to my neighbor, you know. Uh, I, I need to do that. But truth, what that's saying is just as <laughs> we need to speak the truth with love. We can't sugarcoat it. And the truth is, Jesus is God. There is a real hell. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you are far from God. Don't don't think you're going to end up in heaven if you don't even want to spend time with him here on earth. We need to speak grace. Absolutely. And grace needs to win. But we also need to not water down the truth. We don't beat somebody over the head with a Bible. You love them with truth. Some of the most loving things I can ever do is speak truth. And that's the gospel. That's what we need to do. Love the one in front of you. And we do that by entering their world. We do that by before we speak our words, we reveal our own heart, our losses, our our struggles, our, our, our heart. But we must also be like Jesus and come with grace and truth. Let's pray. Lord, we don't always get this right. This whole thing that we're you and skin and, and yet we feel so unworthy. But that is the message. That you come into our mess and no matter what or how messy we've been or are, you just love you just adore. And we want to take this truth everywhere we're at because you are, every, you are everywhere we are at. So help us to speak and to live the message and not keep it personal. Now our heads are bowed. If you have not received Jesus yet, you come bopping on in here and you're like, I, I need some of this. I need Jesus to come into my life. I want that forgiveness. I want heaven to be assured as mine. If you're saying today you want to receive Jesus, you don't need to be perfect, you just need to be willing. Saying today I want to receive Jesus as Savior, could you just lift up your hand high so I can see it? Saying today is my day of salvation. I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Keep my pipe. I see that back there. Three, four, five. Okay, now everybody's. Anybody else? I see that way back there. About six of you. Good. Go, go ahead and put your hands down. Ooh, I'm so excited for you guys. Just pray this prayer in your heart uh, right after me. Jesus, come into my life. I ask you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. for taking on my sin 
and casting it away. I now want to live for you. Give me strength to do that. I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's give a hand. A bunch of people received Jesus.